adults. Can I just oh, ask? Sorry, sorry, is sorry. Where, where, where's, your, where's your evidence for that? It's in the WhatsApp. Sir Bernard is going to say. <laughs> what an absolute crank he is. Well, hello there, and I do hope you're all well. Now, is this amazing Boris Johnson meltdown really sure how much of a complete liar he is? And don't worry, this is only going to be one more after this of our spa for Boris Johnson in his privileged committee meeting where Tory MP, South Leicestershire, Alberta Costa, asked him about his statement in the House of Commons about partisan number 10. Then a confused and animated spaffer got run over by a 100 mile an hour chair of the Privileged Committee meeting, Harriet Harman. Enjoy. Why did you tell the House of Commons that you had received repeated assurances that no rules had been broken when you knew that that was not the case because you knew what the rules were you were at gatherings that breached the rules, and the breaches of the rules would have been obvious to you at the time. That's, Isn't that's, that the case? No, that's, sorry. Let me complete the question, if well, you may. Some might see your reliance most... on the purported assurances you, you received as, and forgive me, as a deflection mechanism to prevent having to answer questions about your knowledge of these gatherings. Would that not be a fair assessment? No, it would be a completely ridiculous assessment. Uh, I said in the uh, in the in the Commons on the uh, on the eighth of uh, December uh, that I'd been re repeatedly assured uh, that there was no party and that uh, no rules were broken. Uh, I was referring to the December the uh, the twentieth, sorry, eighteenth event, the December the eighteenth event of the previous year of, of twenty twenty. Um, I had the assurances that I had received about that event uh, were from people that I had the utmost respect for and who were directly relevant to my understanding of, of what that event consisted of. It was entirely sensible to talk both to Jack uh, and then Jack Doyle and then to James Slack to find out, to get their honest take about what had happened. And my impression on the 30th of November 2020, from what Jack was telling me, uh, was that it sounded like it was in accordance with the rules, it sounded like it was necessary for, for work purposes, uh, but also it sounded from what he was saying that it was in accordance with the guidance. When that turned out, following the Allegra video uh, to be in question, I commissioned Simon Case, the Cabinet Secretary, to conduct an inquiry. So by the time I... Uh, so, and if you look at that statement, uh, I say I've, I've been repeatedly assured that there was no party and that the, uh, the rules were, were followed, but I have asked Simon Case to investigate. So for the purposes of the House, my, my statement, uh, it should be seen in the, for the purposes of the business of the House, that statement should be seen in the context of the investigation, the inquiry that I have just launched, in which in the same PMQs, I say I'm going to uh, make sure that the findings are placed in the Library of the House of Commons. Okay, well, thank you very much indeed for answering my questions thank this afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Could I just... Don't grovel in front of me. They don't deserve that. Put a, a point to you, because um, I, along with my colleagues, was in the House at the time when these assurances were given, and we took them to be serious assurances. You told the House you'd receive assurances. Would you not expect us to be a bit dismayed to hear that it was not from the senior civil servants, it was from political appointees, that they themselves had doubts about it. They don't only count, it's the it only covered one gathering, it didn't cover the other three, and it only covered the rules, it didn't cover the guidance. I think if you'd have said that to us in the House, and also you were there at the time, so it's a bit hard to understand. I, I was, I, sorry. Could you let me finish my sorry, point? Cool. You were there at the time, so it's a bit hard to understand what the nature of an assurance is when you have been there and seen it with your own eyes. I mean, if, if I was going at 100 miles an hour and I saw the speedometer saying 100 miles an hour, it would be a bit odd, wouldn't it, if I said somebody assured me that I wasn't, because it's what you've seen with your own eyes. So do you actually think that we're a bit, we would be entitled to be a bit dismayed about the flimsy nature 
of this assurance Look. when we took it at face value that these assurances amounted to something, and it looks from what you've told us in answer to Mr. Coss's questions that they did not amount to much at all. No, so, so first, first of all, I think, of great respect, Chair, uh, if you're talking about the December the 18th, 2020 event, I don't know, there's some confusion. I was not there. Uh, That's one of the three. I, I was I think the one who's confused here is you, Spaffer. Not that. You were there. And if you look at the statement that I made in the House of Commons, and because this was the relevant issue, because the Allegra video related to the December the 18th event, uh, the, the leader of the opposition's questions the previous week related to the December the 18th event, I was answering about the December the 18th event, because that was the, the matter in, in question. I had received as I said, repeated assurances by different people at uh, a different, more than one occasion and more than one person uh, that the event was uh, in accordance with the rules. And I had that both from, uh, as I said, Jack Doll and James Slack. Now, the, the, the question that I, I think the committee is trying to, to, to unpick is, is that a good enough assurance? Is it good enough to rely on the Director of Communications and the former Director of Communications no, no, about one event, no matter how eminent uh, th th they may be? And I think the answer is yes. He himself had doubts. I think, uh, no, sorry, uh, uh, forgive me. Uh, he offered, that, 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 that's not correct, uh, Chair. Uh, the Director of Communications, Jack Doyle, did not say at the time that he briefed me about the December the 18th event that he had doubts about whether the guidance but was he followed. He did have doubts. Can I just no, ask... Sorry, sorry, Mr. sorry where, 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 where's, your, where's your evidence for that? It's in the WhatsApp. Oh, Sir Bernard is going to... What an idiot! <laughs> what an absolute crank he is. Continues his question. Sorry, he, can, I sorry can, I, can I just say, he did not express those doubts to me. He no, did not I'm express those doubts to me. He had doubts. The person whose assurances you were relying on only gave assurances in, in relation to one gathering, not the others. Only gave assurances of the rules, not about COVID. It was relying on the Chair, I was being asked media. about the one gathering. The, the leader of the opposition, you, you played his clip just now. That was, everybody saw it. He was asking about, he said, what, was there a party in which loads of people came uh, to a Christmas party in Downing Street last year? That was the question. Uh, that was then, uh, when I said that the guidance was followed completely at all times, that was then called into question by what Allegra uh, Stratton had to say. Uh, so uh, we immediately instituted the uh, inquiry by, by Simon Case, but that remained the point at issue. The point at issue was what had happened on December the 18th. And really, if the, if, the, if the committee is going to say that I can't rely uh, on the advice of senior pe people... Uh, look at the guy behind him. He doesn't look impressed, does he? Uh, like uh, Jack Doll and, and James Slack, who had the advantage of actually being there, then it's really going to make it very difficult for government to be carried on. What an idiot. <laughs> and from what I've been hearing, the guy behind Spaffer uh, to the side of him... I could be wrong. From what I've heard, it was Lord Panic. Well, however he was, his body language just spoke volumes, didn't it? Hence the reason why I moved the logo. He wasn't impressed, was he? <laughs> Fair play to Harry Harmon. From what I've heard, she's recently lost her husband and then having to listen to this and then ramblings of a complete and utter turd of a man, which clearly not read over his briefs or evidence that was given to him. What a belt up her. <laughs> but anyway, I shall leave the video here and until the next time I shall bid you farewell and take care my friends.